Hola, it's Kaipacha here with the weekly Pele report uh, for March 2nd, Wednesday, March 2nd of uh, the great year 2022. I'm down here at uh, Punta Uva on the Caribbean outside Puerto Viejo, which I thought was going to be kind of a uh, secluded beach, but turns out that there's all kinds of people around here. <laughs> it is such a big week. Whoa, today is powerful with the new moon, 12 degrees, 7 minutes of Pisces. At the same time that Mercury is bumping into Saturn over there in Aquarius. And then tomorrow we've got Venus and Mars and Pluto all at the same degree of Capricorn. It's been the descent. It's been the descent. The moon moves on by Thursday, goes into the sign of Aries, conjoins with Chiron on Friday. And then by Saturday, the sun has moved up to an exact conjunction with Jupiter. So really this new moon is a sun, moon, Jupiter conjunction. I mean, they are within a couple of degrees. So it's really not that big of a thing, right? Uh, by Sunday, the moon moves into Taurus, squaring, okay, Venus and Mars, because what? Well, on Saturday, Venus and Mars have joined together at zero degrees of Aquarius. At long last, we're moving from Earth to outer space. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to really be something. Things are going to be picking up even crazier and wilder than they are now. So uh, beyond that, what? You know, the moon keeps moving through Taurus. Sextiles, Jupiter, Sun, then uh, Neptune on Monday. By Tuesday, she comes along into, into Gemini and trines Venus, Mars, and Pluto. So let me just look at the camera here and uh, talk to you about what all that signifies. As above, so below, the reflection of the cosmos on planet Earth in all of our lives. All right, yes, I am going to do it. A Pele report with Mercury conjunct Saturn. What was I thinking? <laughs> Blocks in communication, stops in communication. We got funky internet. I can't get this right, that right. Ay, ay, ay. I am sure that we're all kind of going through this a little bit of, and that's part, part of the song, uh, is Mind Games. Mind Games. Mercury conjunct Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. I, I mean, it's it's been building, and now, but it's still going to be, you know, trailing off a little bit. Then, you know, we've, we've just, we've really been through a lot, and uh, it's really something to hear have the new moon conjunct Jupiter in Pisces y you won't believe the Sabian symbol Wow very powerful and it's uh, it lines right up with uh, the lunar planner here I just wrote the lunar planner yesterday you might want to click on the link below in the notes to uh, read further more uh, on this uh, in the Lunar Planner, um, my writing is different than my speaking. <laughs> and I realize I'm a little serious here with the Mercury conjunct Saturn. I will try to lighten it up, but... <laughs> that's the thing that's uh, going on now. The new moon in Pisces. Pisces is chaos, confusion multi-dimensional uh, realities, okay, disillusionment, sometimes leading to despair and sorrow, letting go, surrendering, 
uh, to the paradox, which is unfathomable, un irrational, illogical. It's the sign in the 12th house, and Neptune is the sign, house, and planet of spirit. Spirit, not ego, not third dimension, time and space, figure it out, control it, master it, get a hold of it. Absolutely not. It's cosmic. And it's the cosmic world of the mystical, magical coming in and influencing, impacting through dreams, through seances, you know, through imaginations, through, you know, things dissolving. Neptune rules the ocean and these waves just keep coming and they keep washing it all away. The best laid plans of mice and men <laughs> and women just get washed away. You know, it's like, boom, one solar flare and everything's going to get knocked out, right? You know, one tidal wave and everything here is going to be gone. You know, there's a lot of forces visible and invisible that make up our, to the, our total reality. And Pisces is the invisible spiritual forces that make up so much of our psychic reality, of our dream reality, of our inner soul reality. And it's like how you wake up in the morning. I just noticed it this morning. This morning I woke up with energy and I just whipped out this mantra. But yesterday morning I woke up, uh, you know, it's like we cannot control the way, the mood, the energy level, the frequency level that we wake up with in the morning. And, and the, the outside world can be very much the same. You know, there's still wars going on and demonstrations and this, that. And I mean, there's all kinds of things that are going on. But still, we wake up in a different state of being. It's very subtle. It's very intangible. And so this new moon sets the tone for the whole next month. And the sun is going to come along and hit Jupiter. And after Jupiter... The Sun and Jupiter are going to be marching towards Neptune. And like I say, Neptune is closing a 165-year cycle moving through Pisces until 2025. Jupiter is closing a 12-year cycle. What did you start doing in 2010? Well, now that's kind of closing. I started doing the Pele report <laughs> in 2010, and who knows, right? But you know, things you know, things pass away. Things pass away, and I talked about this. I know in last week's Pele report because we had all this balsamic, balsamic, balsamic. And now, of course, and, and Pluto also has to do with endings. Let's face it, through January, we had Mercury messing around with Pluto, you know. January, February, you know, Venus messing around with Pluto. You know, now she goes back and now Mars is messing around with Pluto. I mean, this has been loss, betrayal, abandonment, you know, overpowering uh, uh, conflict with external authorities and internal, uh, you know, embedded authorities and so now Venus and Mars are rising again resurrecting beginning a new cycle moving away from Pluto and Mars like I said you know uh, t took the lead over Venus for like two weeks but now Venus is picking up speed and she's going to take the lead and go past Mars. <laughs> so that's, that's you know, what's happening with this third conjunction, really, of uh, Venus and Mars coming, you know, moving together. They enter Aquarius together. So this is, this is starting new. Now Mercury is setting off anew from Saturn. 
and then the sun is going to pass Jupiter and start off, you know, anew from Jupiter. So it, it's very interesting to have in a very big way, huge, the end of patriarchy, the end of the world as we know it. And within this whole big ending, there is these new beginnings and the new phase Let's look at the new phase of Venus to Mars, of Venus and Mars to Pluto. It is about trusting our instinct. It's kind of an Aries first house energy where you just want to try, try, try this, try that, try that, experiment with that. Don't be thinking about it too much. Just go for it and learn from, you know, what comes back at you from other people or from the world or from nature or from your physical body. But but the idea with the new phase is initiate. And this is where I said in the Lunar Planner, it's like, so, uh, oh yeah, that was the other song that I could use for today. You know, should I stay or should I go? Is this, is this you know, passing away or is this beginning? Uh, do I let go of this or do I cultivate this? This is where Pisces leads, uh, leads us into a lot of confusion because we can't really use our left brain, linear, logical, third dimensional ego mind to be figuring things out these days. And, you know, in the Lunar Planner, I get just, you know, into materialism and use, overusing the ego mind overusing uh, this linear, logical, third dimensional material world view or material world perspective in order to really try to get a sense of meaning, purpose, destiny. You know, all, all these things are really beyond the grasp here of the ego. And Pisces therefore also has to do with ashrams, monasteries, convents, uh, meditation, mysticism, uh, tarot, seances, art, music, dance. Uh, this is a time to penetrate the spiritual world and to really surrender to the spiritual world, to great acts of service, to great acts of devotion, and not have so much self-interest, competition, greed, desire to get ahead, or, you know, build my Bitcoin or get my, you know, uh, you know f food for the great fall, or, you know, my, my fuel, stack up on my fuel and the, there's this going to be supply shortages, so I'm going to like, you know, fill my basement full of, you know, I, this is, you know, contrary to that. This is really a time, you know, to do our meditations, to see ourselves as infinite spiritual beings having an earthly experience and to not take this earthly experience as all there is. Reincarnation. We've been here before, we're going to be here again. And like, what is behind the veil? What is behind and through, really seeing through? I may have to see through some rain. <laughs> I better get my ass in gear here, man. I'm going to read you the Sabian symbol because I love it. I love it. It has to do with spiritual, to me, discipline. You know, to wake up every morning, you know, and do your yoga or do a spiritual practice, even do a ritual or just meditate in front of your altar. Hopefully you have an altar. This is a good time to create an altar if you don't have an altar. It's a good time to create morning rituals, evening rituals, rituals around food. Okay, whether it's prayer, meditation, contemplation, ritual, however you do it, you know, however you connect. This is a time where we can really hear messages, voices, and receive 
It's the, like the veil is very thin through Pisces, Neptune, and the 12th house, yeah? An ancient sword used in many battles is displayed in a museum. I always think of Gandalf. <laughs> through the effectual use of his will, a consecrated man can become a symbol of courage for all those who follow in his footsteps. Willpower is the ultimate spiritual weapon, and its undeviating use is the certification of individual worth. Wherever found, this symbol emphasizes the imperative need to make use of the will in meeting the basic challenges of the inner life, as well as outer adversaries. With this symbol, we see singled out and strongly emphasized the one power in humanity, which is an assurance of victory in the contests generated by social or occult processes in which he has become an active part. <laughs> the individual must use that willpower, <laughs> yet it is not really his own once he operates at a spiritual level. It is God's will acting and operating through his mind which focuses its thrusts. It is, occultly speaking, the power of the brotherhood, the energy of the whole, operating through the one-pointed individual who has made this whole aware of the need for its use in a particular situation. We are the rays of the sun. We are the swords. Yes, you know, you know, clearing the path, the machetes, clearing the path through the wilderness, chopping open those coconuts. <laughs> it is through... I don't want to even say surrendering more. It's, it's more devoting. It's more consciously giving ourselves over to a higher power of love. The ultimate highest power is love. Giving ourselves over to love. This works miracles. This works magic. This blows people's minds like it doesn't make sense how you can be smiling, how you can be dancing, how you can be in a state of bliss, just like above, levitating, above this third dimensional experience. So, you know, we don't need to be sucked in. We don't need to be brought down. We, we do not need to suffer because the collective is suffering. We can, you know, the lighthouse is bright in the midst of a stormy sea. And it doesn't help the sailors, okay, if the light dims itself because there's a storm and everybody's having a hard time and, and I'm, I'm not going to shine bright because, you know, it's not fair <laughs> or something. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> we can come up with all kinds of things, you know. It's like you don't have to be poor in order to be spiritual, <laughs> okay? You know, I mean, we're leaving this old martyrdom behind. We're learning how to do Pisces in a new way. And, and, and a part of this new way, like I, this is so powerful, a sword, you know? Pisces is not about battle or fighting or if anything it's losing <laughs> you know so you know to have this image of this powerful sword 
at the, for the Sabian symbol for the 13th degree you know the the new moon's at 12 degrees 7 minutes that's the 13th degree of Pisces very interesting to have that be a sword so yeah that's uh, you know I think the you know this message for this week is to forge ahead charge ahead thrust into the future Venus and Mars moving into Aquarius is the future it's liberation from the known from the conventional from what has been accomplished to leaping off okay you know into air castles in the sky taking magic carpet rides taking off in the helicopter the UFO it's time for us to ascend and and from that ascension process new innovative ways new opportunities new perspectives new solutions if we, we will understand everything more fully wholly and completely by non-attachment of Aquarius so we're gonna have Venus Mars Mercury and Saturn okay moving through Aquarius now let us liberate ourselves yeah, it is the sign of enlightenment it is the, it is the sign of total objectivity so yeah baby that brings me to the mantra for today I am a spark that will light the flame so the torch of freedom can rise again lighting the way to the spirit land where we all dance hand in hand the torch the sword okay this is this powerful powerful energy of Mars emerging Venus emerging resurrecting up out of the root chakra out of the underworld of Pluto re-energized We've got the Kundalini. We've got the Chi energy. We've got that red force. We are the spark. You are the spark. And if you don't spark, the torch doesn't light. <laughs> we don't reach the spirit land. We don't dance hand in hand. <laughs> Oh man, so besides mind games and what was the other get up stand up, I was also thinking of Yellow Submarine. I mean, that's just like so Pisces, <laughs> you know. Ow! Maybe the Yellow Submarine is the promised land. Who knows? Ah, baby. Oh, one last time I'll let you go. Here we go. Yeah, it is. I am the spark that will light the flame so the torch of freedom can rise again lighting the way to spirit land where we all dance hand in hand it may be a long path or a long road to spirit land but even the longest journey begins with the first step. Let this new moon, let this week, let this month be, if not your first step, an additional step, a big step towards spirit land. <laughs> Namaste. Aloha. So much love.